Hey everybody, welcome back to Help Me DIY. My name is Aaron and today I'm gonna to be doing a video on some tips and tricks for your Porsche Boxster 986. Now, if you haven't seen part one, you can check out this link right up here and it will take you there. But today I have five brand new tips and tricks to share with you guys. This is my 1998 Porsche Boxster 986. And as you are probably aware to lift the hood there's a nice little uh, tag under there but trick number one is closing it something that people don't really talk about very often but my mechanic gave me a little tip right when i bought this car so instead of trying to slam it to close it if you just set it down right there and put your palm right on the crest and press down it will click in if you press other places it can dent your hood so super easy way to close it without any damage for tip number two we will come around to the other side of the car and open the trunk and you should know that this is where you add oil and coolant there are two caps plainly labeled oil and this one is for your coolant so the tip here is the coolant cap you can see that the number on mine right here wraps around and ends in 447.04. If your cap does not end in 04, I would recommend replacing it because one of the very common problems with the Boxster, especially the ones that say 0.01, which yours might be the original cap, is that it is known to leak. So they redesigned this cap to prevent it from leaking. So I will put a link in the description of where you can order one of these things they're pretty cheap and a good thing to do to make sure that it does not leak. For tip number three, we'll come along to the interior of the car. And I've just recently read about this. Sometimes people's keys turn partially and then get stuck in here. And if that is the case, there is, let me remove the keys so you can see more easily. There is a little notch right here in the ignition. So if you stick a paper clip or something in there, it will uh, disengage your key so you can pull it back out. Now, before I move on, I just wanted to really give a shout out to my diamond donor, Rio Toro. They uh, have sent me these Aviator Classic headphones, and these are what I use when I edit the videos, and they are really fantastic. They are 7.1 channel virtual surround. They come with a little headphone, uh, lots of accessories. Go check it out on their website, riotoro.com. Thanks a lot, guys. I appreciate it. Now, back to the show. So the next two tips come from within this toolkit that you should have somewhere under your frunk. Tip number four is the wheel alignment tool. Have you ever wondered what this strange looking rod with threads on it is for? Well, it is to help you replace your wheels once you remove them. I can't actually demonstrate it on mine because I have actual wheel studs instead of lugs. So all of these do the exact same thing that this is intended to do. So normally once you remove all five of these, take your wheel off. In order to get the wheel back on, you have to kind of finagle the wheel on, hold it in place with a couple knees and start threading in one of your bolts. But what this does is before you put the wheel back on, you thread it in just like one of my studs here. And then you slip the wheel on right over this and it holds the wheel in place for you while you put the other four in easily. Remove this, put your fifth one in, you're back in action. Tip number five is the most complex one and I have actually never done it before. So I'm going to investigate it along with you guys. So what happens if you are driving around somewhere and your top gets stuck in the down position and it starts raining and you start panicking? Well, actually, if you look in your owner's manual, because I'm sure like me, you all have your owner's manual right down here where it belongs. And you look in the appendix under C for a convertible top, you'll go to page 88, actually page 91 and you will have an emergency operation procedure. So this will tell you how to bypass the electric motor to put it up manually. Now the book points out a couple common issues to make sure you check before doing this procedure. So it wants to know was the ignition on and was the handbrake raised, which are obviously requirements to close your top. And then it says to check the fuse just to make sure that's not the problem. 
So down in the footwell, if you don't know, is your fuse panel. You put your finger in this hole and pop it out, lift it off, and here's your fuses. Hopefully you have the little pamphlet in here that tells you what they are. Find the page that is in your language and look around. I'm just showing you all of these steps to show you that there's nothing special about this. I'm doing it and you can do the same. So here, I found it, row D number three, convertible top drive. So these are simply A, B, C, D, and then starting at the left, one, two, three. So this third 30 amp one is what we need. Porsche even supplies you with this little thing right here that helps you grab them, squeeze, and pull it out. And you can check my fuse obviously is still good because that little now U-shaped piece in between is solid. If that is broken, get yourself a new fuse, problem solved. Now one thing that the manual does not mention that I have come across many times, I have a whole video on troubleshooting your car top not working. I'll put a link up here for you for that as well. But a common issue is the micro switch in here can't detect that your top is down for some reason. So I just knock it like that a couple times and it usually solves the problem. So let's assume that none of those things work, then we're going to start following the emergency procedure. So of course you're gonna make sure that the car is off and then there are these little black plastic covers on both sides that you're supposed to remove. So I've never removed them before, but it sounds like they just slide out. Okay, mine wasn't even really clipped in there. And you can see back here are the rods that are what lifts your clamshell and your convertible top up. So right here where the arrow is, you can see that there is one rod with a ball joint on it. And that little wire running next to it is for my rear view camera that uh, the shop installed. And looking straight down, you can see another rod with some red plastic coating on it. That's another ball joint. So the next step is to remove this piece from your toolkit, which is says it's part of the wheel bolt spanner. It says it has a black cap, but mine has a red cap. So what it is is actually this is the bar. Uh, it has a multi-use tool, apparently. It is the bar that you stick through here to give yourself leverage to remove the wheel nuts on your car, uh, but also has a secret purpose here when you remove this and have this flat end. Now it warns you that this is the position that they are in when it goes all the way down and it's different getting access to them when the car is in different levels. But what you should do is start with C, which is the one further back, the black one. And you're supposed to stick this in right here, get some leverage between it like so and pry. And it says it will be a little hard to get out, but you're gonna pry that off. Now I'm gonna do what I really hate that most videos do and not actually show you doing it because I don't know how hard it is to get back on. And the book just says, take it back to the dealer to put them back in. So if this was an emergency procedure, I would definitely do this and risk having to take it back to the dealer to get fixed, but I don't want to have to reach in there and push them back on. It's probably not hard, but I don't want to break my car for no reason. So it warns you when you take the second one off that this clamshell could fall down. So make sure you're supporting it, but I assume it's already down. After taking it off, you should grab it in the middle and lift it up as high as it goes, as it shows in this picture. Then you're ready to lever off rod D. And uh, that again is the red one down here. So as it shows here in the picture, you're gonna push this one in the opposite direction. Hopefully that's obvious. You're gonna put it in here and push it this way. Now I can definitely tell that I would want to put a rag or something around the painted areas so they don't get scratched up when doing this. So D is obviously the rods that hold the actual fabric top up. So make sure you don't pinch yourself or it fall down or whatnot. Now, once that is done, you should be able to lift the top up with both hands and close it. And then lock the top with the lever in the front 
you know, appear where it locks. And then carefully lower that clamshell or compartment cover as they call it. So it does warn you that you have a little bit more of a threat of theft because it cannot be, this uh, clamshell part cannot be locked. Anybody can just walk up and open it. So uh, don't store any valuable stuff in there. Okay, this piece was really hard to get back in place. I will show you how I did it at the end of the video in case you need to see that. And finally, of course, what they want you to do is go to an authorized Porsche dealer and pay them lots of money to fix it. But you know that just means it's time to do some research and DIY. So do you guys have any questions about these things? Do you have any other tips and tricks that you would like to see or share with the rest of us? If so, put them in the comments below. I'll also have a link on my channel if you wanna support the channel financially to buy one of these t-shirts. If you enjoy working on your box deer on your own, then it is a really great shirt to have out in the garage. Great fabric, feels good, looks cool, I hope. And of course, if you're not subscribed to the channel, I would kindly ask you to do so. It just takes a second, it really helps the channel. Like the video and I will see you guys next week. Okay, luckily I had the other side to look at again to figure out how to get this back on. I don't think mine was on correctly over here. But what you're going to notice is that there's a little black clip in here that's going over that red piece that is part of this. So this goes over the uh, little nut here and clips on. So then it should lay smoothly along the painted surface in here all the way back. Uh, there is a clip right under here. You can kind of see it back there. So it goes over the little red bar that you can see there in the middle of your screen. That's why mine was all scratched up is because people have been trying to uh, clip that back on, I guess. And I was finally successful. So once that clips over there and you have this clipped on, you should be good to go.